the course definitely changed my life in such a short period of time. I mean, all of this happened in like a year. I went from dropping out of college, taking your course, getting my first job, at making $15 an hour, and then moving to another city and then finding another job making 50K plus commission and then moving to Arizona on my own completely. Um, so yeah, I did not think that a year ago, I did not think that a year from now I would be living alone, making this much money. So it's been, it's been a crazy change, but I'm really happy. So I'm so glad I found your course. Hey, this is Seth with In Demand Career. I show people how to get jobs in digital marketing with no previous experience or education. And that includes my special guest today, Lorena, who at age 24 is making about $8,000 a month before taxes in what is essentially her first digital marketing job. Technically her second, but her first job was only for a few months. So this is really like her first job. So I'm excited to share her story with you. Thank you for being here, Lorena. Yeah, thank you for having me. Oh, you are welcome. So let's uh, talk about where you are right now. Tell us about your current job, like uh, a little bit about yourself, like where do you live, um, your current job, how much you're making and so on. Yeah, so right now I'm working remotely from Arizona and I work as a PPC campaign manager for a company that works for Yahoo. So what we do is we help drive more traffic to Yahoo's ads. So we create Google and Facebook ads and basically they lead you to Yahoo's ads. And I'm making 50K salary plus commission. So yeah, like you said, it's around, it's been around $8,000 a month, but it, it obviously changed during COVID and it can still change, but that's around average. So yeah. That's amazing. That is amazing. And it's unusual guys. Like I said, I don't, ex I tell people don't set your expectations to be making you know, close to six figures in your first job. But these types of situations do exist. I'm very happy that she's at a place where she's getting a share of the profits that she, you know, is helping to manage. Um, so we'll talk more about that in a second. But let's, um, let's walk people back. Um, first of all, I'm just curious, you, you live in Arizona? Um, are you an Arizona resident? Uh, no. Well, not yet. Um, I just moved here in February, so it's been around six months. So when I first got hired, I was working at the office in San Diego, and I was there physically for around six months. And then I was moving with my boyfriend, so I asked them if I could work remotely, and thankfully they let me. So yeah, I've been here for six months now. That's great. Not just for your life, but for your taxes. Uh, mm -hmm. Much less in taxes, working for a California-based yeah. company, but living in Arizona. Um, yeah. What's that? And it's a lot cheaper. Yes, definitely lower cost of living. So uh, let's walk people back. Um, as you told me, you're 24. You do not have a college degree, no bachelor's degree. Um, tell us your journey. How did you get into the field, etc.? How did you? How did this happen? Yeah. So when I first started taking the class, it was, or the course, it was last March. Um, so it's been about a year and a half now. Um, and back then I was still contemplating whether or not to keep going to school and get my bachelor's degree in human development. And because I wasn't, I wasn't a hundred percent sure about that. I ended up dropping out and just sticking to your course. Um, and obviously like once I started taking your course and I started watching the testimonials and seeing what you said, that you were probably gonna start off making minimum wage. It just seems super realistic and I like that a lot. So I ended up just dropping out of college and just taking the course, which took me about two months to finish and yeah. Awesome. And I like that. Yeah, I do like to be realistic, which is why I'm making a big disclaimer for people, even though, you, you know, you can see the results, you know, start small, build up. Um, so, okay, so you took the course and then, then what happened? Yeah, so after I finished the course, at that point, I had done everything you said to do. So I got, I created the website, I got Google Ads certified, I did everything. So I felt pretty confident to go interview. So I think it took me only around three weeks to get my first job. And I mean, partly it was luck because I lived in a really small city. And so I ended up applying to a really small agency. So when I interviewed with them, coming in and like knowing the language and just having a website and being Google Ads certified, it really impressed them. 
because everyone else that they had hired had no experience at all. So I was like good going in there with like what I had from your course. Um, so yeah, it only took me a few weeks. So I got really lucky to be honest. We, we distinguish here between luck, being lucky and being fortunate. And I, I like to say that you're fortunate because it wasn't luck. Luck is when you win the lottery and you were like, well, you were drunk, you got a lottery ticket and you won the lottery. No, you did the work, you showed yeah. up and you stood out. Um, and uh, what was I going to say? And, and just uh, where were you living at the time? What small city was this? Uh, it was in Temecula. I'm not sure if you know where that is, but it's like an hour away from San Diego. So it's not super small, but it's definitely, it, there was nobody there with digital marketing skills at all. Um, so that, I think that definitely made it easier for me, but yeah, like you said, I, I think if, if I would have gone in there with nothing, then I don't know if they would have considered me. I definitely did all the work and it definitely made me more confident and it just made it seem like I could actually do this. So, yeah. Yes. And I like what you said about that. I mean, listen guys, even just from what you create in my course, it still impresses people. They are the, <laughs> I'm telling you, you were like the prettiest girl at the dance. You Everybody, when you see those job um, postings and you see 300 applicants, don't freak out and go, oh no, I'll never get this job. It means there's 300 terrible applicants or people without experience applying for these jobs. So, mm -hmm. and you just illustrated that. So, um, so tell me, so what was it like at the first job? So what I did there, I was a digital marketing analyst and the job title said I needed to do email marketing, SEO, just basically everything. But because I went in there with my Google ads certification and basically knowing a little bit more about Google ads, they had me just work on that. And then I think after a week they had me work on Facebook ads too. So I just managed all the, all, all the ads for the clients, which was I think around 20 clients. I'm not sure what the budget was, but it, was, it wasn't too much, but it was like perfect for me because I had never done this before. So actually, even though I was only there for like two months, I actually learned so much. After that, I was like, I, I can actually do this. So, okay, so, so you have literally like no experience or what you did in the course, and, and yet you, that you, they hand you 20 client accounts. Oh, that, yeah. Yeah. Now, can you estimate, I mean, I got to assume that each client was spending at least 500 to a thousand dollars a month. Yeah, I think, I think most of them, I mean, there was some between like $50 and some to like, I think a thousand dollars daily spend. But then we had like a couple lawyers that were like, I think $20,000 a day. So it must've been like, it must've been around a hundred thousand at least a month. So it's definitely a pretty big budget for someone who has never done this before. But I mean, I think them throwing me in there and just doing it was the best thing they could have done because that's how we learned a lot. Yeah. So, wow. So this is all, I know you, you have to understand. I mean, this is so bizarre for people to hear. It's exciting, but then they're like, is this, is this a scam? Is this real? Do companies yeah. like, I didn't know anything. And they handed me a hundred thousand dollars a month. That's what yeah. happened to me at my first job. And it's just the beautiful product of terrible education. You know, yeah. if, if colleges were preparing people, I believe if colleges were preparing people properly, then this wouldn't be possible that there'd be like all these other applicants and, but there's a lack of people that know what they're doing. So but give us some more information. So how did it actually work on the ground day to day? Did, like, did, were you intimidated by that? Did they offer you some kind of mentorship while you were handling it? Or were you just kind of like, uh, you know, just, okay, I'll just adjust this keyword bid for this lawyer for $60 a click, you know, how did that go? So the first day they trained me, they trained me with one of the girls that was already there. Um, and that was pretty much all the training I had. After that, if I ever had any questions, I would just ask my manager. And we would usually just like message each other and I'd tell her, what do I do? But honestly, based off your course, I had, I was already so familiar with all of it that I kind of just, I was just kind of creating a bunch of campaigns every day that like, it only took me like a couple days to get the hang of it. After that, I was, I was perfectly fine being on my own. There you go, guys. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> the fundamentals of the training are sound. Um, I'm very happy to hear that. So then, okay, so this is your first job. It's already very impressive. Um, 
what were you making at this job, by the way, right out of the gate? I was making $15 an hour, which I was perfectly fine with because I was working full time and I had never made that much before. So $15 an hour plus full time, I was like, I was so happy with that. And like, it was exactly what I was expecting because you said you're going to get something that's around minimum wage. So that was like more than enough for me. And yeah, so I ended up leaving after a couple months for a few different reasons. But I mean, it ended up leading me to like the yeah. best job. And that's, again, just to bring this home, guys, and, and minimum wage, so funny, because I, I grew up in the 90s. So when you say minimum wage, $7 an hour pops into my head. Now it's like, it's really like, oh, I know. 15, 15 an hour is close to minimum wage in a lot of states. But really, you, you've seen my other interviews, it can be anywhere from like 15 to $20 an hour in that entry level job. But the mm -hmm. point, as I tell, explain to people, it doesn't matter, don't get fixated on that. It's all about leveraging that first job into your next position. So how did that happen? How did you get into your next, your current position? Once I moved to San Diego, there was a lot more job opportunities. So I was applying like crazy at that point because um, there were so many jobs and I wasn't used to that in Temecula. And Temecula, there was only like, I think like three agencies. So I had a lot of options and I had a lot of phone interviews. And then I think I went around like a month for me to get like my first in-person interview and it all happened really fast and like one week I ended up getting three in-person interviews and then I got two job offers but I obviously took one and I found my company through a recruiting company and when they interviewed me they told me that they were actually the Nimble 5 my company was actually looking for someone with at least a year of experience but then they said they were going to try to get me an interview with them anyways which thankfully they did. And then once I interviewed with them, they told me as long as I had some experience with Facebook ads, that was good enough for them. And then they told me that they were mainly looking for someone that was going to fit in with the company. And the week after I got the job offer and I honestly didn't even know it was $50,000 a year. I had no idea. I thought the other job that I got offered was $17 an hour, which was what I was expecting um, coming from $15 an hour. But yeah, then they called me and they said $50,000 $50, a year plus commission. It was, it was pretty crazy. That's awesome. I remember you wrote me an email about that. So, and then let me, so you, you, you said a recruiting agency helped you, which is something I, I always tell my students. And so mm -hmm. I focus on that even more because I really, recruiters are fantastic. Mm -hmm. um, in, this, in this field you are like an nfl linebacker and they are your age <laughs> um, yeah so how did you how did you how did you get in touch with the agency so when with the recruiting agency yeah so when i found them i actually had no idea they were even a recruiting company um they're called creative circle and yes, I talk about those them oh, many yeah. times, many times in my yeah. uh, walkthrough videos. Yes. Yeah, I saw that they had a lot of job po postings, so I applied to all of them, and then they got back to me for like one of them. And once they interviewed me, I, that's when I realized like this is a recruiting company. So yeah, once once they interviewed me and they went over just everything, how Nimble Five was looking for someone, um, and they were gonna see if they could get me an interview, then that's I felt. It, Honestly, I really liked that I found them through a recruiting company just because I had never done that before. And um, I'm sorry, I like lost my train of thought. I don't know if you want to cut that out. <laughs> it's okay. I'll cut it. Uh, <laughs> oh, sorry. What was your question? Oh, you lost your train of thought. No. Yeah. <laughs> I'll just jump in. So that, just, to, just to expand on this point, guys, about recruiters is that so recruiters how that age, how that industry works, and it can be kind of brutal actually. Is if you're a recruiter, your whole thing is there's a company and they need somebody, and the recruiter is sending them good candidates. And if if the company hires the recruiter's candidate, you're you, then mm -hmm. the company pays the recruiter a lot of money, mm -hmm. like a lot, like a lot, a lot. A like lot. yeah, I got my first six figure position with the help of a recruiter because there was a small company in orange county and he but this cool thing about recruiters they want you to get hired because mm -hmm. you get paid so they're going to give you all the they're going to give you all the insights on how to get hired and they're going to they're going to go to bat for you 
Mm -hmm. so my first job is that the guy was telling me, here's, here's some things to say, here's some things to know about the company. Um, and, and, you know, and when I got hired, I realized later, I, I looked at the contract, I said, well, they, I mean, they paid that company like 10 or $15,000 for me. So your that recruiter got paid a lot of money. <laughs> to yeah, no, yeah, the same thing happened with me when I interviewed with them. They were giving me tips and they were telling me what to do when I go see them because obviously they did want me to get hired. So yeah, they were telling me um, exactly what to do. They fixed my resume, so they gave me a brand new resume. Um, so I think that obviously helped me a lot. But yeah, once I met up with Nimble Five, um, I knew that was like the job I wanted. So luckily, it worked out for me. <laughs> That's awesome. Now, let me ask you something. Actually, this is, I, I may cut this part, but um, between you and me, what, did you use the resume uh, template that I had provided and what did they change about it? Yeah, I had, yeah, so I used your resume template, but I think I still had my previous jobs on there, um, like before digital marketing, just because I didn't want to have like nothing basically. Um, so I wanted to show that I had worked before this. Um, so they actually just like took all that out and they just yeah. left my, my digital marketing job in there. So I was like, okay, but that's all they did. Yeah. Okay. So, and that's great guys. Cause that, you know, some people I, always speaking to this, no previous experience. A lot of people, you know, obviously I provide this resume template. I actually just updated it and did a whole new section in the course on this because I also real I drove this point home. So it's funny you say that they didn't like, they didn't like make you a new shiny resume. I tell my students, I think a lot of people have that same thinking. And I say, no, some people I've had, they put all their work experience for like five years in detail. Mm -hmm. And they go into detail about their job where they were working in some other industry. And I'm like, they don't care about that. Yeah, they don't. <laughs> they, you, you could have literally just one job and it was digital marketing. Um, so, but, but that's what a recruiter will do. In fact, I think that's what the first, the first um, person who helped me um, was a recruiter. And actually, I don't even think what happened is actually a recruiter in like 2000 and something, uh, I applied to them. They were impressed with my experience, but they looked at my resume and said, your resume stinks the way you've laid it out. Change this. And I changed it. And then I actually applied to another job and then a different recruiter is the one that got me my first six figure job. But um, it's, it's like pathetic. They don't teach this in school. You have to rely on these recruiters to, or oh me. My God, no. <laughs> uh, so, all right. So let's jump, jump. In. So, so this, the new, the new job, um, that's, that's amazing. So you thought you were going to get, you know, maybe 17, $20 an hour, you end up getting up to 50,000 a year. What was it like getting this new job? Um, I mean, it was crazy because I had, I was like renting a room on my own. I was like, I was broke for a while, just like looking for a job. And then I went from that to getting something beyond what I expected. And also the job was in downtown San Diego. So um, our office had a view of like the entire city and like the ocean too. So it was just, it was pretty crazy. That's amazing. And so, and then tell us about the job itself and like the company and what were you actually doing? Yeah, so um, so once I was hired, I was pretty much trained for a week. And then after that, I was left on my own. And all we do is we create Facebook and Google ads on literally anything. As long as Yahoo's running ads for them, then we run ads and we test it. And if it's profitable, then then we keep it running. And then so I keep I keep 70 per, or 70. Sorry, I keep 7 percent of the of the profit that the company keeps. So, and sorry, <laughs> please cut that out. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, yeah. So I keep 7% of what the company keeps. Um, and yeah, it's like, it's pretty awesome. I, I feel like I got really lucky cause I've seen, I've seen your testimonials and I've seen what other people do. And I feel like what, I'm really happy with what I do just because we have one client, it's just Yahoo, and we just have to worry about them and we have to worry about making them profit and that's it. So I really like it. So I don't understand this exactly. So Yahoo, how do they profit? How do you know how much profit is coming in? Are they at running ads for other companies and they tell you? Or? Yes. Yeah. So whoever's running ads on their company, um, 
they tell they give us all the info so they tell us everything they tell us how much profit they made and then we they kind of calculate what how much of that came from us wow that's yeah. hilarious too i think it's amazing and you know, i've seen that too i've seen you know Fa yahoo is advertising on facebook and google that's just kind of that's just kind of funny in and of itself um, i know so tell us about your commission in the beginning there, especially like, so what, what kind of, I mean, what happened when you got your first few paychecks? Were you surprised? Like, what, what was that like? Yeah. I mean, right from the start, I was making profit, but I was probably doing, I was probably managing between like 4,000 to 5,000 a day. So my first check was, it wasn't anything crazy, but it was, I still got like, I think like $900 in bonus. Um, oh, sorry. Not, not that high. It was like around ninety dollars in bonus. So just that, 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 yeah, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> it's okay. It's not a performance, you know. It's it's genuine. And I cut all my interviews off. Everybody has a little. Yeah, I know. I Thank think. you for that. Um, I'll just prompt you again. So, so when you first started, what was it like when you got your first check? Like, what? How much was it? And how how was it on this uh, commission structure? Yeah, so when I first started, I was managing between $4,000 and $5,000 a day. So it wasn't a crazy amount. And I think my first paycheck was only for like the first two weeks. So I probably got like $90 in bonus. But that was that was already like crazy for me. The fact that I was getting more than just my regular paycheck. And then it was my second month that I think I got, I probably got around $2,000 in bonus. So it was a big jump and I was, and that's when I realized, I think I'm going to be making a lot of money at this job. Um, and then it just kept growing from then. Um, every month I was getting more budget. So I was making more profit. And then, so that was going well, well for a while. Once COVID hit in around March, that's when our profit went down. But over the last two months, we've gone back to normal, not completely, but we've definitely gone a little bit closer back to normal. That's fantastic. So just so before COVID, the your monthly your monthly gross income was about what? It was around eight thousand dollars. And how much of that was a bonus? Um, like half. Yeah. No, you're right. Yeah. Because I mean, like, and and uh, and then during COVID, how, what was like when things were were bad? How how much were you making a month? Uh, I think I, it was definitely in like the hundreds that my bonus, I mean, my regular paycheck was, it was still 1600. Um, but I think my bonus was probably around $500. So it was a big difference, but I mean, it was still more than enough for me. Um, oh, and the, I, the total monthly, I wasn't clear. You, you, no, no, 1600. You make more than $1,600 a month. Yeah. Sorry. It's just, I forget how much it is. My, like my gross salary um i think it's so i think i'm making four thousand dollars with my salary alone um so i think around COVID, i was making around five hundred dollars in my bonus paycheck um so it wasn't much at all but i mean if we slowly gone back to normal so thank god for that yeah yeah that's still really good especially living in arizona working remotely forty five hundred dollars a month uh gross is fantastic but then to make almost double that with bonuses is really amazing mm -hmm. um and i again i'm really i'm happy you're at a company like this and this is another reason why i encourage all my students once you've paid your dues once you've gotten that six month experience if you're at a company and they're not paying you right push and get a position like this or push for higher pay. Um, I had to do that at my first agency job. You know, I knew how much the company was making. I was happy to work there for six months making less and then, and then, you know, you have to, you have to demand what you're worth. You know, these, you're making this company a lot of money. You should be paid. Um, and, and that's why my students have so much success, but I, you know, I encourage people to, to think that way. And I'm, again, I'm happy you're in that situation. So what, uh, now let's just talk about your, but th let's go back just one more second because I know people always ask about this. So you, you had the recruiter, you're in the job interview. How did it go? Like you, you, you mentioned this a little bit, but go in a little more. Like how did it go when they're like looking for someone with more experience and you're like, I've been doing this for three months? Um, I, basically, I basically just told them, I just showed them that I knew enough and I knew I, I, knew I had the skills for it and I, they believed me. They, 
I mean, they saw based off what I was telling them that I might, I might actually have a chance at getting the job. So I think just me just convincing them and just me showing them like that I knew all the skills, I think that was enough for them. And I don't know, again, I don't know how, what their other applicants look like. So maybe they just weren't really getting people that were, that were, that, sorry, then maybe they just weren't getting people that had like experience. So I think honestly, maybe I was like one of the top applicants and I just had no idea. Well, obviously you're one of the top applicants. You got hired. Yeah. But what did you do to convince, like when you say convince them, you didn't convince them. What, how did you demonstrate that you were knowledgeable? Um, so I would bring the Excel spreadsheet. Um, I mean, the recruiting company didn't really know much at all about digital marketing, but just me showing them the Excel spreadsheet of me knowing how to create a campaign, I think that showed them that like, okay, she knows what she's talking about. So yeah, so they got me the interview. And yeah, once I had the interview with Nimble5 and showing them everything and them actually knowing about digital marketing, they saw that I actually had all the skills I needed. There you go, guys. Another student bringing in the, the demonstrable work from the course. And that's all, that's all the company needed to hire her for this very, this very excellent position. And that's, the other, that's another good point is that a lot of these recruiters, um, you will know more than them. Um, and again, the more confident you get, I think that's really, it just happens naturally, which is such a great power shift is like you normally you feel like, Oh, I'm just the poor job applicant. Please give me a job. But no, your knowledge gives you this power where you know more. And in so many cases, my students have told me whether some people have gone to job interviews and they were able to teach the person interviewing them something. Um, when you talk with a recruiter, remember these guys are not experts in anything except trying to hook, you know, net, you know like salespeople are trying to connect mm -hmm. this company with that company. So when they, get, when they, they see you, that's the other thing that's, that's great with a recruiter. Um, if for some reason you didn't get this job, they would have you on file. The next mm -hmm. job, they're going to be like, oh, let's talk to Lorena because maybe this next company will hire them. Um, and I can't tell you again, in the, in the human life, if someone has a profit motive to help you, it's very good. You know, they will make money. <laughs> so they're going to work hard to get you hired. Um, and, uh, and yeah, so um, just tell us, and we're going to wrap up soon. There's construction next door and, and this has been really great. Um, but just as far as your life, um, how, how has this whole thing changed your life? How is it now? I mean, it definitely, the course definitely changed my life in such a short period of time. I mean, all of this happened in like a year. I went from dropping out of college, taking your course, getting my first job at making $15 an hour, and then moving to another city and then finding another job making 50K plus commission, and then moving to Arizona on my own completely. Um, so yeah, I did not think that a year ago, I did not think that a year from now I would be living alone, making this much money. So. It's been, it's been a crazy change, but I'm really happy. So I'm so glad I found your course. That was perfect. Wow. I'm going <laughs> to use that clip. <laughs> that was great. You just summed it up. So that's awesome. Um, I was trying to think if there's any, even actually anything else I'm going to ask. Oh, man, they're doing this construction next door. So that's why I'm glad we... We got it. We yeah. And I'm going to get out of here. Um, I think there's anything else I was going to ask about. Uh, um, have you been hit up by recruiters? Um, I, I think I've been hit up a few times. I haven't really touched my LinkedIn at all since I got hired. So I've been hit up a few times for a few different jobs. And they'll also be like, if you're not available, um, do you know anyone that is looking for a job? And yeah, so I've had a few of those, but not too many just because I'm not, I'm not really on LinkedIn and I don't really update anything on there. Um, but I think if I was constantly like updating everything I actually do now, then I'd probably be getting hit up a lot more. Yes, you would. And you or I love it. I love it when the recruiters are like, do you know anybody? Yeah. <laughs> Cause we are trying to find people so we can make a commission. I'm placing them. Um, I think, I think I have that same, th like, I'm trying to think if there was anything, I really, really covered everything. This is great. I think I could just wrap it up, but if there's, yeah. um, 
it's been uh, it's been great talking with you, Lorena. Thanks for sharing your story. I'm very happy for you. Um, oh, here was the last thing I was going to ask you, which I always ask people is, how do you feel about not having a college degree? Uh, I seriously, I feel so much better not having a college degree just because that means I was never in debt and I never had to pay thousands of dollars for a diploma. Um, so I definitely, I, ha I work with people that are still paying off their loans. So me just having no loans at all, it, it's honestly, it feels great. <laughs> I tell you guys, skipping college. This is one of the examples of the many examples. Skip college, like you'd skip the third grade. You know, nobody ever walks around like, God, I can't believe I skipped the third grade. Oh, I missed out. <laughs> you also, nobody has to pay $100,000 for the third grade. So yeah. um, that, that is such a great thing to share with, with people your age. I mean, just, the, just, just to not have to start life with that burden of these terrible mm -hmm. loans. Just, you're just happier. Yeah, definitely. Um, I remember in my, one of my, one of my um, agency jobs, I was like the oldest, one of the older people there. I was in my 30s. Everyone there was in their 20s. And I remember talking with a couple of my, my coworkers. I remember this one girl, I remember I asked her, I was like, so how much do you have in student loans? And she was like, she, I remember her face just changed. She just like looked so stressed and so heavy and so oh. deep. It was like I brought up like a death and she just said, I don't want to talk about it. And oh. I remember... Later, when I talked to her, I realized she had somehow through some series, you know how it happens when people go to college. I mean, some people, some people, will, some people only walk away with, you say only like 20 or 30,000 in debt, which is still a ton. But some people yeah. get caught in this world of like academic bullshit and without any government regulation or protection, they rack up six figures in debt. And she somehow, I didn't know how she did this in her undergrad, but she, she had, in the six figure mark and she is in her 20s and i remember i thought you know what it's like to walk around with that every day you know and on your in your case do you know how wonderful it is to not have that yeah it is especially having so many friends and knowing so many people around my age that are still in college or still working on paying off their loans it's just not a lot of people drop out um at least based off like the people I know, not a lot of people think that's like the way to go and that's the way to do it. But I mean, clearly it's not. There's so many other opportunities. Absolutely. Well, thanks, Lorena. It's been wonderful talking with you. Thanks for sharing your story. I'm happy for your success. It's very inspiring. Um, and just if there's any last words you'd like to share with the, with the people watching, feel free to do so. Yeah, I definitely would not just take the course, but actually do everything that Seth says to do. Create the website, get Google Ads certified, use his resume template. Like the reason he gives you all that is because it really is going to help you get that first job. If you go in there just saying, I took a course, I mean, you might get it, but you don't really have any proof to give them. So if you show up showing them your website and the Excel spreadsheet, they're going to be impressed and you're actually going to feel a lot more confident like talking about digital marketing. So definitely do everything that he's us to do. Awesome. I think pretty much everyone I interview says that. And that's pretty much the main, like if I ever have a case where someone is writing to me for the most part, if someone says, Hey, you know, it's not working or things aren't working. I'm always, I, oh, all I do, all I have to do is say, did you go through the entire course and do everything mm -hmm. I said? And they're usually like, no, <laughs> I did. Yeah, I, actually, I had I had two um, two friends of mine. Well, one of my brother and then a friend of mine. He, they actually took your course, but they finished it and they didn't do anything else. They didn't create the website. They didn't do anything that you said to do. And then eventually they just gave up and they didn't keep looking for a job. So I yeah. know that that's what you have to do. Yeah, guys. And you, that's how it works. I mean, if you people sometimes ask me about, you know, success or not success, I'm like that, that happens. And because it's an online thing, I'm not, I'm not in a classroom with people. Like I can't go like, Billy, did you do your homework? <laughs> it's all on the internet. So there's people like your brother and I, I never know about it. You know, everyone yeah. who reaches out to me gets a response, you know, but if they do that and it's, it's human nature to do it, you have to push past that um, to get the results. And, you know, that's why, you know, 
I'm so supportive of the students who do do that. But yeah, you have to, <laughs> you have to do the work. So yeah. a good example. And then you get the yeah. awards. And then if you don't do the work and you don't get the results, don't complain about it. Yeah, exactly. Don't be surprised. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Lorena, it's been great. Uh, thanks so much. And, um, you know, we'll stay in touch and um, hopefully we'll circle out around with you in, in, uh, in the future and see where you're at. And I'm sure it's going to be great. Yeah, thank you. It was great talking to you.